Alrighty, now we're gonna work on creating the best sound you can get. Um, the, the, really what I always think about when I am, um, when I'm thinking about my sound, when I'm teaching about how to get the best sound uh, possible for my students, uh, what I wanna work on with you here is the fact that everything we're gonna talk about has to do with having the reed vibrate. Vibrating, vibrating, vibrating. The more the reed can vibrate, the more sound you're going to produce. So the three elements that are important as far as making sure your reed is vi vibrating correctly is your embouchure, your throat, and your diaphragm. So let's work on some embouchure ideas first, okay? So um, first of all, again, let me keep stressing that being, be aware that you always wanna make sure your reed is vibrating. So if you've got too much pressure going on here with your embouchure, you're choking off the vibration of the reed. Also, if your um, bottom lip is too, what would you say, too pillowy, too soft, uh, you're cushioning the reed too much and you're not allowing it to vibrate um, to its full potential. So as far as that latter point is concerned, just you know, simply make sure that your bottom lip is pressing against your bottom teeth. Uh, you know, not you know. There's nothing uh, that has to do with playing that is extreme or you know, just uh, you know, you're, where you're flexing your muscles or in this case your lip. You know, extremely. You want it to be you know a, a comfortable feeling. But you want to make sure that your bottom lip simply is is pressed down you know, on your bottom teeth so that you're, you're not doing this and you're not pillowing too much of, of the, uh, the reed. So um, here's an exercise you can do uh, to make sure you're using the right amount of pressure when you play. First of all, I want you to play, uh, I want you, no matter what saxophone you're playing, I want you to play a G, a low G without the octave key back here. Okay, so I'm gonna play my G now. Okay, so if you have your horn, I want you to do this along with me, okay? Um, if you don't have your horn, take notes and get your horn and watch this lesson again. But this is important. It's good to have this give and take, okay? So I'm going to play my G, and you play it also with me. Just a straight, long tone. Okay, now I want you to play by yourself. Ready? You've got five seconds. Go. Okay. Didn't quite hear you, <laughs> but I will on your video exchange. Okay, so now what I want you to do is play that same note. What we're gonna do is make sure that we have, we're not using too much pressure. Perhaps we're, we're not using enough. Uh, you're not using enough, I should say. But and anyway, the idea is that now I want you to play that note and I want you, as you're playing the note, to drop your lower jaw, your whole lower structure, slowly, 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 so that the sound opens up and then starts going flat, and then goes away, it sounds kind of funky, and then goes away entirely, like this um, awful sound. Ready? Again. Okay, so do that. When you do it, I want to make sure that that arc is nice and slow so you can hear the difference. Don't just go that's not the point of the exercise. That's not going to do you any good. Okay, so do what I um, just did on the long arc. Got five seconds. Ready, go. Good. Do it again. Follow my hand if you can. Ready, go. Okay, good. All right. So the next thing you want to do is center your sound. So basically, you're going to find the, the pressure pressure uh, point, the, the amount of pressure in your bottom lip, um, that is optimum for a good open sound. I can guarantee you right now that it's a very slight difference from where you're playing. Now, so it does, it's not going to be as if you're um, suddenly going to feel like your uh, you know, bottom jaw is touching your, your chest or on the ground. It's, it's a real subtle difference, okay? So as you play, what I want you to do is play your note where you are and then relax your bottom lip and allow um, the sound to dip a little bit. And listen, you're going to hear the sound open up, and then perhaps it's going to go, well, if you go far enough, you're going to eventually go past the optimum sound and get into like you know, the distorted sound and just before it started dipping down. Um, and then center it back in. Center it back. Use your ear and find that spot where your sound sounds the best. Ready? Here we go.
Okay, so where I stopped, I was doing this to indicate that I had either gone too far or come back too much. So find, again, use your ear and find the spot where you feel like the sound has opened up uh, the most without, you know, again, going too far. I'm gonna do it one more time. Check it out. Once I've found that spot, I'm gonna lock it in, make sure I'm using plenty of air to support it, okay? Okay, so again, it's, a, it's gonna be a subtle difference from where you are right now. But everybody, no matter, uh, you know, beginning player, intermediate player, advanced player, pro player, um, is gonna, you know, we're always sort of finding that optimum place, okay? So, um, do it, go, go for it. I'm gonna give you seven seconds this time. Well, got tons of time. So go, play, hip, find that place, lock it in. Okay, so do it one more time. Start off, bring it down, bring it back up, lock it in. Ready? Go, play, down, find, find that spot. Good, okay. So. Uh, once you've found your spot, it's a good idea to make sure that you're playing in tune because invariably you're using less pressure here and your pitch may be a little different. Maybe not, maybe, maybe so. But uh, use a tuner to lock in, um, to make sure that where you feel your sound sounds the best is also a good you know, spot um, intonationally. And I'm gonna say it again last time, but, but again, it's gonna be a really subtle difference, okay?